The Ellen Care Show is now in our ninth year here on KBBG, and I just want to say thank you to all of my monthly listeners. We want to talk women's health issues and ways you can keep yourself and your family healthy. Now, women tend to make most of the health care decisions for their families, so we'll talk about things that will help you make those choices. We'll also introduce you to the healthcare experts from Allen Hospital, Allen College, and United Medical Park, and we will be happy to take your questions too. I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Carla Betterspell. She is from CAS, from the HIV Community Coalition. Now, Carla is an expert on HIV AIDS, and so she is here to talk with us about AIDS awareness. Good morning, Carla, and welcome to the Allen Care Show. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Carla, before we get started, can you share a little bit with our listeners about yourself, how long you've been in the area, how long you've been with your current position, and just kind of walk us along. Yeah. CAS um, actually has been um, a program of Cedar Valley Hospice for 26 years, and um, I have been a case manager there for a little over 15 years. And I have one coworker who's also been there a little over 15 years, and we provide medical case management um, for individuals in the community who are diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. Well, thank you. We are truly blessed to have you here today, you. and I truly do have an expert. Thank you, Carla. <clears throat> Carla, we're going to just talk about just some of the basic information. Um, you know, let's just start at the beginning. What is HIV and AIDS? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to jump in here with Carla as well. Uh, my name is Janelle. I work with Allen Women's Health, and I've, Lisa and I have been on here together many times in the past. And um, through Allen Women's Health and the Together for Youth program, we go out in the community and do a lot of education on um, sexually transmitted infections, including HIV AIDS. And we try to keep explanations, especially with adolescents, pretty simple. And so for today, we just want to remind listeners that HIV stands for the human immunodeficiency virus. AIDS stands for acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So both of those are talking about a virus that attacks the immune system. Um, and there's four body fluids that can transmit or pass along the HIV virus. Um, it's blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. So if a person does not come in contact with um, those four body fluids from someone who is infected with HIV or AIDS, um, they're not going to get HIV or AIDS. So we always try to reassure kids about that because sometimes I think, especially this time of year when they're in the yes. mall and somebody's coughing or sneezing, they're like, oh, am I going to get AIDS that way? No, no. You do not get HIV or AIDS through casual contact. So. Great, thank you. And that was our surprise for our listen for our listeners, Janelle, our co-host. So again, thank you also, Janelle, for coming. Now, please tell us about the HIV Community Coalition. What does all that mean, Carla? We um, we got started um, several years ago, and um, we're just a part of a coalition in the community that provides education. Um, Part of the um, coalition consists of Allen's Women Health, um, Blackhawk County Health Department, um, of course CAS, uh, Cedar Valley Hospice, um, CHAIN, which stands for Community HIV Hepatitis Advocates of um, Iowa Network, um, Iowa Department of Health, um, Monarch Therapy, um, PITCH um, is a group, um, it's called PITCH, Positive Iowans Taking Charge of Their Health, um, Together for Youth, um, and then also the University of Northern Iowa, the Wellness and Rec Center there. And we formed, like I said, several years ago. Um, and we feel like together we can help stop the spread of AIDS and create an informed, health, um, healthy community that provides acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, we still feel like there's a lot of questions out there. Yes. And we want to be able to uh, not only provide that acceptance, but offer compassion and support to those you know, in our community. What a wonderful collaboration, and I love how you said education, because again, there, like you said, there's so much miscommunication that is out there, starting with our young people up to the adults. So great, and I love PITCH, I love what it stands for, Positive Iowans Taking Charge of Their Health. That's, I like that. Now, the HIV Community Coalition recently recognized World AIDS Day. 
Now, what is World AIDS Day, and how did the coalition recognize that? Well, World AIDS Day, I, I can't tell you how long it's been uh, um, recognized internationally, but for quite a few years now, and it's always recognized on December 1st, okay. and it's just an opportunity for people around the world, because HIV AIDS affects our world. It's not just something that's in the United States. It affects another one of those dis diseases that does not discriminate. Right. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so, World AIDS Day is just uh, a, the opportunity for people to unite in the fight against HIV, mm -hmm. to show their support for people who are living with HIV. Because just as you said, Elisa, it does not discriminate. And um, just. Wonderful, beautiful, kind, caring people have been affected by HIV AIDS. And it's also to help commemorate more than 35 million people who died worldwide from the AIDS virus. Um, so the HIV Community Coalition, we've been recognizing World AIDS Day for the past several years, each year in a little bit different way. Um, this year we focused on using uh, media and technology to kind of raise awareness. Great. Um, <laughs> there were, you know, Facebook posts on, you know, the different agencies that are involved and some agency friends that we have posted things like on Facebook or Twitter. I'm so not into the social media stuff, so forgive me when <laughs> exactly. I say, <laughs> me either. <laughs> say things the wrong way, uh, you know, coming on the radio and talking about this. Uh, there were uh, uh, there was a wonderful um, uh, TV interview uh, with a family that's been touched by HIV/AIDS. Um, some churches had announcements and information in their bulletins. Um, uh, you and I, through the uh, Wellness and Rec Department, um, they did some outreach on campus, to create some some awareness. Um, awesome. So we just really want to thank you know everyone who was involved this year in getting getting more information because. We've kind of operated the past few years when we do something with World AIDS Day mm -hmm. with kind of the, um, you know, mantra or whatever in mind that education leads to compassion. So yes. we want to educate and we want to create that compassion and awareness for those living with HIV and for the family members and the friends Absolutely. who have someone who's living with HIV AIDS. Absolutely. And even though World's Day, World's AIDS Day, is celebrated on December 1st, I'm sure the whole month of December, um, education will continue. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And so that's why we really appreciate that yeah. KBBG is, you know, um, definitely open to allowing us to, you know, come in and share such an important topic and, and do some, you know, education that mm -hmm. will hopefully lead to more compassion in our community. So. Yes, like their background says, um, poly... Power is knowledge. Yes, yeah. So communicate exactly. to educate. So again, exactly. yes, we, we give a lot of praises to KBBG. Yes. Um, what about, let's talk about some of the misconceptions or stereotypes about HIV AIDS because there's a lot of it that still exists. Yes. Yeah. And I maybe think, share with the listeners maybe some of the ones that you guys may have heard. Yes. Well, I think one misconception, um, especially among young people, mm -hmm. when I say young people, um, teens, early 20s, um, they feel good, they, you know, so. things are going great, <laughs> and they realize they don't think it can touch them. Yes. And so I think there's um, it just, you know, because of that, um, that's a stigma. Um, yeah, I in, when I go out into schools, there's still that idea that I can tell who has HIV, yes. oh. and I'll just stay away from someone who looks like they have HIV. And you cannot tell if a person is HIV positive. You, you can't tell by looking at someone. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so many young people still have that stereotype, still have that belief that someone has a look of HIV to I've them. heard that one before too. Um, and they just look like they do. They do, yeah. yeah. And then that, that works to put that young person, I think, at a greater risk yes, of yes. becoming infected with HIV. Because if they think they have these superpowers mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell just by looking at someone whether or not they're HIV infected, um, you know, they may think, oh, that person I'm dating, there's no way they could have HIV, so it's okay for me to have sex with that person. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's how these, that, that's one example of how some of these misconceptions um, can place people at risk. Right. So it's, again, why we want to educate. Exactly. 
And I remember a training I went through years ago, but this is something that stuck with me. And the trainer said, it's not who you are, it's what you do. And that has stuck with me for years. And it is so true because you can be on Wall Street or you can be on a street mm -hmm. living with HIV AIDS. Right. Right. So that's something that just stuck with me. It's not who you are, it's what you do. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And we talked about it doesn't discriminate. It, it affect, can affect anybody, um, like you had mentioned. It um, doesn't matter how much money you have or how part poor you are, mm -hmm. um, HIV and AIDS um, can affect anyone. Right. Male, female, um, you know, straight, gay, it mm -hmm. does not across the board. Across, across the board. The board. Yeah. Across and, what, the board. and what about Iowa? You know, I have heard before, oh, it doesn't happen in Iowa. That's small town Iowa. Is that another, you know, misconception? It's just like sometimes when you hear about, you know, people being robbed. Oh, right. it doesn't happen there. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I live in small town Iowa, and I can definitely agree that that is a misconception. Let me just give you a few quick stats. And that is, uh, in 2013, according to the Iowa Department of Public Health, there were 2,100 Iowans, that's over 2,000 Iowans, living with HIV or AIDS. There were 122 new HIV diagnoses in 2013. And that's, that's all over Iowa. It's not just big cities in Iowa. It's all mm -hmm. over Iowa. Um, there were 16 deaths in 2013 that were attributed to the AIDS diagnosis. And um, locally here in Black Hawk County, um, at, according to the most recent statistics, um, there were 96 people residing in Black Hawk County at the time of their HIV or AIDS diagnosis. And when we say that, we want to remind people this means that there are friends, relatives, maybe co-workers, um, community members, people that we care about who yes, are living yes. in our community who are HIV positive. So it is a local issue. And these are countable numbers, is that correct? So there could be, the, the numbers could be higher if they wasn't countable numbers? Right. Um, there, in all likelihood, there are more people mm -hmm. living with HIV in our community. It's just that they don't know they have it. Exactly. They feel fine, so they haven't been in for testing. I know the, the face when you think of HIV, especially with the young people, is, is you know, Magic Johnson, um, the athlete, and then for the older people, Rock Hudson. I mean, right. you know, and, and it seems like um, we start more educating or you, you hear about it when there's like a celebrity or someone that comes out with it and then, you know, the funds come and all right. of that. But. Now, locally, um, are there services that the coalition provides specifically for this? Yes. As, as individual agencies, mm -hmm. our coalition offers services. Um, not necessarily, like you can't look in the phone book and go, oh, let me look up HIV Community Coalition. Okay. Um, people would need to look up the individual agencies. I'll just mention some real briefly. And then probably after a break, I, Carla can talk a little bit more about through CAS because they are definitely a go-to agency. But just real quickly, as I mentioned, like Together for Youth, you and I, we work on, you know, educating students about the issue. Um, the Black Hawk County Health Department, Allen Women's Health, those are both places where people can go for HIV testing. Um, and then CAS does a whole array of, of services. Great. Carla, and I want you to hold that thought right after break. This is the Allen Care Show a program devoted to health care issues for women and their families. When we return, we'll ask Carla to tell us more about what the coalition provides in HIV awareness in our community right here in Black Hawk County. This is the Allen Care Show, and I am Aliza Walker. Ages of 13 and 30. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm glad you put that slow down because I get like, I don't know. That's the expertise that you got. You just want to share all this information. So the next question, when we talk a little bit about CAS then? Yes, yes. The early protection and the future of effective treatment. People can manage HIV and live long, productive lives. Visit ActAgainstAIDS.org. So we, a public service. We have a different story. Yeah. ActAgainstAIDS.org. So we'll take a couple minutes. Yeah. Good.
You are less likely to let the influence of alcohol lead to unsafe sex. And like I said, you're the expert. Condom. You're the expert. You're doing it. One third of condoms. I just don't want to be chummy. No, you don't want to be no cross that way. Don't no, rely on the guy. You be the influence. It is, it is such my needed condoms. Go to youbetheinfluence.org. To me. Three, two, yeah. one. Welcome back to the Allen Care Show. I am Aletha Walker from Allen Hospital. We're talking with Carla Fettersville from CAS and from the HIV Community Coalition. Again, Carla is an expert on HIV AIDS and she is here to talk to us about AIDS awareness. Carla, uh, before the break, we were talking about some of the services that different coalitions or individual agencies provide. What specifically does CAS provide? Um, CAS provides, the, the main thing when we, we work with an individual, we first work with an individual um, who comes to our organization, is the most important thing is making sure they're linked with care. And that is with um, an HIV specialist. Mm, okay. And so ensuring that they do get linked with an HIV specialist. Uh, we work closely with the University of Iowa Virology Department. And there's also now Covenant, Dr. Ali, who does also specialize in HIV. So that's the main, uh, our first priority is making sure they're linked with care. And then following them with their treatment plan. You know, if they have questions about their medication, giving them the support to take their me medication, mm -hmm. that would probably be, you know, just as important. Mm -hmm. um, other things that we do is <clears throat> referring them to other agencies or organizations in the community um, that could be of assistance, and that could be DHS, it could be the Food Bank, Operation Threshold, just those organizations mm -hmm. in the community that they could also, um, also benefit from. We do have some financial assistance. Um, we have different grants. Um, some will help with housing, utilities um, for those that are low income, uh, medication co-pays, mm -hmm. once again for those that um, are un unable to pay um, for those. Mm -hmm. Another ongoing thing that we find that's important is um, support, yes. um, emotional support. Um, because due to the stigma, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people maybe they haven't told anybody um, about their HIV and in some situations Cass is the only one who knows, other than their physician. And so they really don't have um, a support system mm -hmm. out there. So that, those are a few things that we do um, we do offer. Okay. How many counties do you oh, guys 14 serve? counties 14 in Northeast counties? Iowa. Wow. And there's other, uh, nine other AIDS organizations in Iowa. They're spread out. So if somebody quote, doesn't necessarily live in our surrounding county, um, there is help for them as well um, and support through other organizations. Now, who should be tested for HIV and when? Well, according to the CDC, there's nearly one in six people with HIV who does not know that they are infected and they can pass this virus on to someone without knowing it. Um, men having sex with men continue to bear the greatest burden of HIV infection. And among race or ethnicities, African Americans continue to be disproportionately affected. However, the CDC, and I'm going to read what the CDC recommends, okay? Um, because the Centers for Disease Control, that's what CDC stands for, they are the experts, the go-to people with these types of recommendations. And so this is their recommendation. Everyone between the ages of 13 and 64 be tested for HIV at least once as part of routine health care. Testing once a year or more depending on, um, you know, if there may be some risk factors. Mm -hmm. But testing once a year or more is recommended for people at higher risk for HIV infection, such as, and again, these are CDC recommendations, such as men who have sex with men, injection drug users, um, or people with multiple sex partners. Pregnant women can pass HIV to their unborn child, so it's highly recommended that pregnant women discuss testing early in pregnancy. And it really should just be part of, hey, I'm going into the doctor, I mm -hmm. just found out I'm, I'm pregnant. 
let's talk about HIV testing. It certainly doesn't hurt right. to have an HIV test done and find out, hey, you do not have HIV. A routine test. Exactly. And then the, the, the good news, if someone does test positive for HIV, the earlier in the infection that they find out, mm -hmm. um, you know, the more likelihood that they'll have better outcomes. Like they'll be referred to an agency like CAS that can help them, uh, you know, just, you know, sort things out. Where do I go from here? Where's my support? Uh, okay, these medications, what, what do I do here, there? So, you know, it, I, what I tell kids when I'm in classes, um, and, and this is true about STD testing as well, um, it's always going to be a good thing. You'll either go in and find out you don't have anything, mm -hmm. or you'll go in and you find out that, yes, you do have some type of an infection, but you know what? <coughs> you're going to get answers then on where to go from here on out. And you're going to be much less likely to pass it on to another person because you're going to be educated on how to reduce that risk of right. passing it on to another person. That's it, so right healthier community all around. Now, what about the cost and confidentiality? You know, I know a lot of people, just like you said, you know, you guys might be the only ones to know or the providers, but does it cost to be tested? Um, you know, we, we do not want cost to be a reason for someone to put off getting an HIV test. And the good news is, you know, in the past few years, as we've seen changes, like with the Affordable Care Act and some of the insurance changes, we're seeing more insurance companies um, that are paying for HIV testing. Um, our coalition partners, and, and I work for Allen Women's Health, and the other coalition partner with the HIV Community Coalition, Black Hawk County Health Department, um, we're both agencies where we have various types of funding mm -hmm. that may be able to help pay for some or all of the costs um, with an HIV test. If cost is a concern, please call one, either the health department or Anna Women's Health and, and talk with us. Um, you know, usually there's a way that uh, it's either covered or it's very, very low cost. A lot of women, for example, at our clinic, when they come in for an extra 20 bucks when they're there, they can have a very simple HIV test mm -hmm. administered. So, and just to go along a little bit with, with the cost, um, I think it's good for people to know that um, our services are free. Um, so there is no, um, there's no charge for our services, and we do pride ourselves on confidentiality. That's very, very important. We will not release any information unless we have approval from the individual. And free is always good. And then also, as you mentioned, with the Affordable Care Act, um, it's not considered a pre-existing condition. So please give um, anyone at Allen a call, and they will definitely be able to get you in contact if you do have insurance concerns. I want to talk about a personal story. Who would like to share that? Uh, sure. We it, um, Through CDC, they have, I think it's a beautiful website. Um, yes. It's called Let's Stop HIV Together. And they have oh, many, many stories of people who are living with HIV or they've had family members who are or were living with HIV. And there's one story that we chose that really goes along with what I think we're trying to do here today, and mm -hmm. that is education leads to compassion. And um, I'm just going to read the story. It's titled, Because If We Don't Talk, We Suffer in Silence. Yes. And this is a true story. It, is, it has been written by a young woman living with HIV. And so here's her story. I was diagnosed with HIV in 1992. I just graduated from high school in Washington and moved to Florida. I met a man that I thought I was in love with, but I realized it wasn't love, it was lust. We started dating, and he asked me to move to Georgia with him. I told him no, I had just moved to Florida, and I wasn't ready to move again. When he moved, I met someone else, and I didn't think about him anymore. In December of that year, I got a yellowish coloring in my eyes. My mother, being a nurse, told me to go to the doctor. She said I had jaundice and I needed to get checked. My dad took me to the hospital and I had a blood test done for hepatitis and HIV. I did not think it was positive since I had not slept with the new guy. Two weeks later, I got a call from the doctor's office saying my test results were in and I needed to come to the office. My dad took me back to the doctor and when I got to the office, I was scared. 
I didn't know what to think. When I sat down in the chair, the doctor told me I had hepatitis B and HIV. I was shocked and devastated. I sat in his office for a couple of minutes and left the office. When I got to the waiting room, my dad asked what the test results were, and I told him everything was fine. I walked out of the office, and I did not tell him the truth. As a matter of fact, I did not tell my mother or anyone else in my family for a while. I told my brother about my status only because he found me crying in the living room. I made the decision not to tell anyone, and because I was not having any symptoms, I kept it a secret until 2004. I remember this started in 1992, and now it's 2004, so this is how long this young woman has kept this a secret. So I kept it a secret until 2004 when I started getting sick and having trouble seeing. By this time, I had moved to Atlanta and, and was going to school um, when I got sick and started to lose my eyesight. I knew something was wrong. I went to the hospital. I found my T-cell count was four. I had a high viral load. They immediately admitted me. I realized I had to let my secret go. When my mother got to the hospital, we had a long talk. And as I laid in the hospital bed, I told her everything. She asked me why I didn't tell anyone. And I told her I didn't know how to do that. I'm saying with this hope that someone will read this or hear this story and realize they're not dealing with this alone. My mother replied that she loved me unconditionally. It's about time we talk about this because if we don't talk, we suffer in silence. And that's the end of this young woman's story. But again, it just illustrates that if someone mm -hmm. is concerned about HIV, where they are living with HIV and it's a secret from their family, please contact CAS. I mean, yes. it's a great place for support. Again, I hate to end on such a somber note, but that, you know, we just, that's how that disease is. But again, let's not suffer in silence because there is hope. Carla, for anyone who needs to contact you, um, office hours, telephone number, how can they re reach you? We can be reached, CAS can be reached at 319-272-2437. And Janelle, yes. with Together for Youth, how can they reach yes. you? Um, through Together for Youth, if they want us to come out and do some education with kids, um, you know, teens, 274-6768. Um, we also have a Facebook page now, Together for Youth Waterloo, so um, <laughs> that would be another way you could get in contact with us. Again, I just want to thank the both of you ladies to come out of your busy schedule and talk with us today on a serious serious topic that is affecting our community. You've been listening to The Allen Care Show, a show for women and their families. My guest today has been Carla Fetterspill, Cass from the HIV Community Coalition, and my better half co-host, co Janelle <laughs> Ballhagen. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> uh, Carla is an expert on HIV AIDS, and she has been talking with us about AIDS awareness in our county. Please join me in January 2015 already, guys. Oh, my goodness. For my next edition of the Allen Care Show right here on KBBG. And we just want to say um, have a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa from Allen Memorial Hospital, Unity Point Health. And thank you for listening.